Welcome everyone, Christine here with my campaign guide as Emmerich. I've already done a campaign overview guide, but let's go about it step by step. Now, I wanted to save some time, so I just fought the first two battles over here. The one against the army of Clan Helheim and also the settlement battle here. I did manage to take uh, quite a bit of damage on my Sun Dragon, unfortunately. But that's just part of the game. Sometimes things go very well and the dwarves clump up. Other times they don't go so well and they don't clump up and so they're not an easy target for AoE. So you can't kill them as easily. Now after these two battles and you should go for the post battle loot with the field battle and also to loot and occupy the settlement. You actually want to get the rebellion over here. Now what I'm going to do is invoke a Syrian. You could invoke for experience, but I do want to invoke a Syrian to reduce the construction cost. I want to get the Graves of Dragons, and over here I also want to get the Elven Gardens. Now I want to emphasize something. For this particular video, what I'm going to do is load a character, or load multiple characters. It's very easy to get a bunch of characters that you save. You just play a campaign as Tyrion, or specifically Elfarian. He's the easiest that you can do this with. You play a campaign as him, you get the ability to recruit nobles, uh, you get the ability of recruiting a lord with a good effect, and that is going to help you. I would say that this is very much warranted in Emmerich's campaign. Now, some people don't like that, but bear in mind that while, this, while doing this will make a difference, especially in the early game, it isn't necessarily mandatory. Now, I'm going to get Dragonhorn, and I've already got Root Marcher over here. And now... I am just going to recruit two units of archers with light armor over here in the Plane of Bones and get military advancement. Diplomatic-wise, I don't really have a whole lot of choices. I could go to the Legion of Asgore and declare war on the Darkland Orcs, but I don't necessarily think that's worth it. I could also go to declare war on Clan Verms, but again, not worth it at the moment. It might be worth it later on. But this is going to consume quite a bit of my gold, uh, getting the Graves of Dragons, getting the Elven Gardens. If you don't want to load the character, you might want to wait with getting the Elven Gardens or not get it at all in your campaign, because Emmerich's Kalador Incumbent skill will allow you to recruit nobles without it. So what I'm going to do here is take the Ash Ridge Mountains from the Dwarves over there. And then we're also going to deal with the Thunder Gods and then deal with Drazov. Now there are a bunch of different decisions that you can make in this particular campaign. But one of the things you do want to do is get the Rebellion pretty quickly. The reason you want to get the Rebellion quickly is because one, the Rebellion will give you money when you defeat it. It will give you public order so you won't have a Rebellion for quite a few turns. And crucially, it will give you influence for the post bow option. Okay. So we get the quest for Emmerich. Now, one of the things you could very well do in this campaign. Let's just move Emmerich over here. Okay. And we're going to recruit more archers with light armor. And we're also going to get Burning Head. And on top of that, we're going to research Archery Prowess over there. I could recruit another Lord over here and just move Emmerich. Actually, I think I am going to do so, though there's pros and cons with that. The pro is obviously you have a second army. The con is the supply lines and the upkeep increase. So let's just wait with that. I should, there should be enough movement range over here for me to take the Ash Ridge Mountains. Now, this army over here is going to get some units. Bear in mind. But it shouldn't really be too much of an issue. Now, you want to take the Ash Ridge Mountains, you want to minimize your casualties, and then you want to go deal with the Thunder Guts. Because if you don't deal with the Thunder Guts, um, you're going to end up in quite a few issues with quite a few issues in your campaign all right so we take over the settlement should be able to not resolve it or not okay let's go find it um, so right now the public order in this particular province is minus 59 so next turn we're gonna get a rebellion 
Now, you could always get a Noble with a bad trait, or you can just play another campaign for a couple of turns. And Emmerich is not the kind of campaign I would recommend jumping in as a, a High Elf. The one you want to get is Frugal, because that's going to give you the um, ammo benefit I there. And you don't have to... And you don't have to spend influence. No now, with that, get rid of the Elven Gardens and let's find this battle. Alright, the battle should be pretty uh, simple uh, to deal with. I do want to be careful with that Sun Dragon because it's already taken quite a bit of damage, so I'll just rely on my archers. Dragon Princes will stay in the back, and we're just going to move forward. One of the things to remember is you do on number, uh, you do on range. Um, the enemy. Okay. Now they're gonna take quite a bit of damage if I'm not careful there. And we're going to send that Sun Dragon over there very uh, carefully as well. Alright, Dragon Prince is um, just going to pull these archers out. So they'll be able to charge over there. And the Sun Dragon, since there's so many units clumped up, and they should be vulnerable there. Should be able to, uh, the Sun Dragon should be able to do quite a bit of damage. The Spearman will keep the Dwarf Noble occupied, uh, the Dwarf Leader. And we get uh, Princes, uh, Dragon Princes coming in. Alright, that was all of my Winds of Magic there. Let's pull back these archers. Alright, disable guard mode. And that should be the entire garrison over there. And she will be able to get a good spell off. That will kill quite a lot of those models. Get Emmerich out of there. Get the Dragon Princes. And let's try and kill this fellow right here. If we can get Emmerich into the fray here against him, he should be able to do quite a bit of damage. Alright, they're breaking off right there. Now, Emmerich is pretty crazy when it comes to his charge bonus, and he's really going to use that. He's really good Lord Hunter, which is something that quite a few other people do struggle with. At least he's a good Lord Hunter on his horse. On his dragon, that might be a different discussion. Okay, so post battle, we got 1500 gold, and now we're just going to loot and occupy it. And the rebellion will spark up next turn. I'm going to get some rangers with Emric. Yes, rangers. They're pretty good units in melee. And I'm going to get Bowmaster. For her, I am going to get Kindle Flame. And we're also just going to get rid of... Well, I could get rid of this particular barracks and repair this one. Uh, because this way I can get the two economic buildings over here in the main uh, settlement. Now over here, we're going to get recruit rank and local recruit capacity. 
because we do want to get the full stack for Emmerich. Alright, so we got the Dark Elf uh, Rebellion coming up. Now, they'll get more units. I won't be able to deal with them instantly. The buildings have been destroyed. Actually, I will be able to deal with them instantly. So I just move Emmerich here. And we start getting these two structures. What do you require? I am a fount of knowledge. I will not fail. Let us break the dragons. All right, with this army defeated, we get more influence. Now, there is certainly an element of RNG in Emmerich's campaign. And at this point, we do really want to get Emmerich moving. So I'm going to recruit another lord, specifically this one with the Dept. And we're going to get some more archers with light armor. We want to deal with the Thunder Guts. For her, more in the burning head, and for the noble, get replenishment, more replenishment. So this will help in terms of... So my economy right now uh, is going to become more stable. And actually, one of the things to know is that you can move a lord into a settlement, but if you move him right outside and you want to come uh, to have him cover more distance, it is actually a smart move to do something like this, like just move him in the direction you want to move him in next turn. My throne stands ready. Do not disappoint me. Clan Verms is still not doing good enough. Karakazul. There might be an argument to be made that actually dealing with Karakazul like that is not necessarily in your interest like engaging with them diplomatically might not be in your benefit in fact you might want to declare a war on them uh, the reason is that you've got Queek that's going to be coming in uh, to deal with Karakazul because Karakazul will try and take Black Rag they might succeed they might fail that's not the important bit there the important bit is that Queek is going to deal with Gorfang and once he deals with Gorfang he's going to march directly on Karakazul That is something that he does in every single one of his campaigns. So we're just going to get these two structures at a higher level. And move... Um, move this noble, let's say, at the boundary. Over here. Because we want to move him back as well. And we're going to attack the camp. They don't have the army to stop us. By attacking the camp... And just not resolve that. Could gain a bit more influence. And but instead I'm gonna go for a replenishment in this case. Guardian. And this way. I'm gonna get more spearmen actually. Two rangers is decent enough. And then switch uh, then after one more turn. Just switch it back uh, switch it to Okay, move over here. I'm gonna have to fight the next battle manually. And take over the settlement. He's gonna keep recruiting units. He's gonna get Room Archer. Now, obviously, it would have been a lot better had I fought the battle manually. That said, there is a benefit in auto resolving these kind of battles. The benefit is that you completely eliminate the armies you're fighting, they don't run away. Because the army there outside of the settlement could have actually gotten away. So my goal here is to obviously take Pig Barter. Uh, the reason taking Pig Barter is important, and I may want to also spark a rebellion here, uh, but the reason taking Pig Barter is so important is because these thunder gods, like, if you could ignore them, that would be great, but you can't, unfortunately. Okay, over here, we're just gonna go for casualty replenishment. Okay, 
Okay, that would eliminate two of the Ringers. But we might be able to get the second army to force march all the way here and then transfer the units into Emmerich's army. Let's see how many. So the, he's got seven units. We want to put the spearmen. And that will be it. Summary execution. All right, that would still eliminate the ranger. So I'm just going to fight this on my own and then continue. Okay, that was a victory. And now I'm going to loot and occupy it. That will give me the replenishment that I want. For Emric, I am going to recruit some archers with no armor. Maybe it would have been a better idea to not recruit any spearmen because I could have recruited them right here. Just a mistake on my end. For the noble, get hard to hit. And for her, I'm uh, just going to finish getting Burning Head. Here, I'm going to go into Spearwall and then Militia Training for that extra recruit rank. Now, I could just stop over here. That would be an idea. And there are benefits in doing so. One of the chief benefits is that I, w I could attack the Black Fortress quicker. And while the and while the Thunder Gods can't be relied on, if I get the defensive alliance with them, then I can obviously rely on them for some kind of flank protection. And having a minor faction like this protecting your flank can obviously be a benefit. I just smashed them really good right there. And now I'm going to sell the settlement that I just took back to them. And they're going to give me a lot because if I look at them, right? If we look at Ruin's End. It's a, it's um. The reason they're gonna offer me a lot for it is simply because it's part of their province and they want to devote uh, themselves to it. Doing so means that I don't have to engage Ugorst. The benefit of not having to engage Ugorst is that I can then make a deal with Greasus, or I can avoid having to fight Greasus. One of the problems you have as Drazif or as Emric is the fact that you may end up having to uh, to deal with either Gorst or with Greases. If you can avoid doing that in your campaign, then that gives you a lot more campaign flexibility. Uh, in particular, the problem is with the Sentinel set settlement or with this particular province. A quest. So we got the quest battle. Now, dealing with this quest battle um, may not necessarily be in my interest over here. I mean, I can win the battle. That is not the problem. Defender of the Phoenix um, Throne. But it is certainly going to be a difficult one. So I'm just going to take one of these archers and then move Greatest Emmerich the here. This will be master. This no, this uh, lord is going to go over Last. there, and we are going to. Well, there's two ways of viewing it, right? I thought about it, about whether or not to do this particular battle. I could win it, but it's difficult, and I'm not going to make a campaign guide based on the assumption that everyone's going to beat it, because you are supposed to be a higher level, a much higher level than this to deal with this. Like, the Dark Elves, yeah, they're weak enough, and so is the Vampire Coast, but this Blood Dragon, that is a completely different uh, discussion, so... I if you can beat it early game, though, it is a, obviously a significant advantage. But you got to be careful with those kind of uh, decisions. Either way, I'm just going to sell Ruins End to the Ogres and get a trade agreement with them. I'm not really interested in a military alliance with them. Um, but yeah, with, with all those agreements, I'm now in a pretty good position to take the Black Fortress. Well, look who's decided to attack. So, Drazif has decided he's going to be a bit annoying with respect to that. Now, the problem with Dra dealing with Drazif, and this is actually the, one of the main issues that Denbrink is going to face in his campaign, you are almost certainly going to end up at war with Drazif, one way or another. You can delay it, you can do whatever you want, but it is inevitable. Um, Drazif is the issue is not Drazif's army in any way, shape or form. The issue I am 
is the fact that he's got a, bl uh, a freaking nuclear weapon at his disposal that isn't necessarily so easy to deal with. Now I'm going to move this noble over here and and get a couple of more units recruited. We need to take the Black Fortress over here. Now, if we just attack... Now, if I just attack, I can easily win. And I can remove the Mega Mortar from play. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to get more units over there. But bear in mind, like, the way this will end up working will depend a lot on what decisions you want to do. Um, that you want to make. So, for instance, over here, I could end up having a completely different situation uh, with respect to this. I'm just going to move this uh, noble here. Now, Drazov might decide to come over over there. Okay, this siege is going to be pretty annoying. Not because the army itself here is so formidable that I can't defeat it. No, that's not the problem. Far from it. The issue is of a different nature. So, first off... Um, so, first off, Chaos Dwarf Settlements are bugged. So, when you end up attacking one of them... There's a good chance that what's going to end up happening to one of your units is just going to flat out freaking die when you attack a gate. That is pretty damn annoying to deal with because it obviously limit uh, because it obviously means taking those gates is uh, is an issue. Another problem Uh, another problem is that obviously Drazov has that Mega Mortar. And that Mega Mortar is, as you might imagine it, a genuine damn annoyance. So I'm just going to sacrifice those fellows right there to try and take the gate. They're not even firing. Jeez. You know, I think I'm at the point where I'm just so frustrated by the design of these uh, siege battles that one of the things I might recommend to people is just, like, accept the fact you're not going to win sieges that easily. Like, this is a siege that I can win. In normal circumstances, in normal gameplay circumstances, I would be able to win the siege without too much hassle, even. But because I can't attack the gate with a lord, I guess that's Creative Assembly's uh, solution, if you will. And I might even lose the Sun Dragon there. Because I can't attack the gate with the Lord, um, it's just going to take a lot more, longer there. It shall be done. Now, I need to pay attention here. Oh, okay, these guys got smacked hard by the Mega Mortar. Better them than the archers. Like, as long as I don't lose the archers, I'm good. Drazov does have another army. Just need to pay attention to what's going on here. And I need to pay attention specifically with my... Alright, get that out. There's a second Mega Mortar. And that's it. So just one hit. You need to pay attention to where they're gonna hit. Alright, the spearmen. Well, I guess this is how we're gonna deal with it, right? Just send an infantry unit to take the gates, right?
Dark laborers coming in. Oh, come on. The hell is that about? <laughs> what is going on here? This is so silly. <laughs> this is genuinely so silly. Like, I'm not even joking. And I'm just considering, like, okay, when's the... When when's the uh, when when when's the the other shoe gonna drop? The other shoe is like just instantly losing my sand dragon that's fighting over here on the gates. That's the that's what I see as the other shoe dropping. Okay, let's just get them in the walls because they are gonna do most of the heavy lifting here. Try and get these dragon princes as well. Prince Imric. The glory of Imric. That's actually most of the army, I think. Dragon most of the enemy army. Imric should be able to win that fight. So I guess that's the key, right? If you just want to avoid uh, suffering the way I have suffered in certain campaigns where... Uh, these guys, by the way, should be able to win against pretty much everything. And I'm going to move the archers forward to, um, to start dealing with some of those towers. And send that dragon over there. Tackle that. Emmerich is doing a pretty solid job there. Pull these guys back. Now, if Drazif is at the Dark Hold, I should be able to. Uh, like, I, I should be able to. Okay, pull the, the Sun Dragon down. Let's get the Dragon Princes in. How much more? Oh, there's there's the army. <laughs> pull them back. Pull all of them back. Have them stop. Orc laborers are no joke. Them come. Glory is mine. So we got a lot of magic uh, ready to to tackle uh, to throw at these guys. I could also take a different perspective here. Alright, Flaming Head over there. He should be dead soon enough. And Emmerich will certainly kill him. 12 seconds there. And more Orc laborers coming in. Goblin laborers. There's some more Orc laborers there, but that's not really going to be an issue. Once you get into the gates, it's kind of GG. Alright, just one. Uh, one spell. What is he getting hit by? Just one rank. <laughs> one wins of magic, please. Thank you. 
Here they come. All right, let them loose. is going in. Nice charge. Not <laughs> really. And do still have two more breath attacks, so let's uh, make use of them. It will be done. Ready. Duty calls. So that's the entire army there. Try and take those guys out. We might be able to get the armor losses soon enough. Hope so. That is a gigantic amount of labor, I gotta say. <laughs> Pull him back. These guys uh, still have some ammo, so we're just I'm just gonna move them forward. There we go. That took a long time. Victory. That was 3,000 money, and we're just gonna occupy it, loot and occupy I am going to repair it and get a plaza. Get more archers over there. For her, get evasion and get magical reserve. I could have gotten the spell, but I don't necessarily need it as much. Get replenishment. Even more replenishment over there. Master of Dread. So Drazif, without his little trick, is effectively finished. Even if he comes here and lays siege, and we might even want him to do so. Alright, he just decided to do nothing. 
think I broke the AI. That was a bit of a bizarre thing to see, I, un I admit. He might be in ambush stance, but I kind of doubt it because he obviously would have taken dark hold. So he's probably seeing the full head, uh, full steam ahead, uh, to try and take me out. Like I want to take the sentinels from him. Keep in mind, once I defeat Drazef, I'm going to encounter Tretch, which is going to be his own can of worms, as you could imagine. Moving out. Okay. Now, money-wise, um... Warriors and queen. Bring them death. They will know Grenador's name. They are surely worth me. Glory awaits. Okay. These fools have no chance. Good. Protector of Elf One. Let me just move him here. Get more archers. Oh, shice. <laughs> Prince of Caladore. Didn't notice that. But it's fine. It's a lot more fine than you might think. Okay. So I'm just gonna wait with leveling him, Eric. Even if I lose some settlements in my initial territory. Oh, I could lose the barracks there, don't I? Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. So let's just switch to growth over here. I mean, it isn't really an issue because I obviously can retake it, but still, it is, it is a bit of a disappointment, suffice to say. I know he can obviously do that. It just would have been better had he not done so. I think what I'm going to have to do... Yep, there it is. What I'm going to have to do is my second army is going to have to deal with the Darkhold, but the problem with that is that Drazif, of course, can just leave what he's doing there. This is the problem with this particular campaign situation. Now, with the Thunder Guts on my side, at least I don't have to deal with Gorst. I don't have to engage, crucially, diplomatically with Gorst. Because Gorst does like the Thunder Guts, for whatever reason. So he's not so likely to declare war on them. It can happen, of course. But, um... It can obviously happen. Now this army over here is going to move back here, get some spearmen. I just wanted to protect it there. Now the best thing that Drazov could do, for me personally that is, would be for him to use Underway to get back there. That way I just, you know, kill him. He can't attack the Bone Gulch. Not instantly. Okay, there he is. I'm not going to be able to defeat him instantly, but I don't need to defeat him instantly. What I need to do is hunker down into the into the fortress of Orag and take out the Darkhold. And if he decides to, if he decides to attack the fortress, then obviously, then I that's an attack I can defeat. The problem is that because of what he has done. Tretch is going to come for me. Now, ideally, I would pull some Miracle out of my ass and be able to defeat him over here. Without having to send Emmerich. Let us wake the dragons. Let's just take it over. I don't want the rebel. You may look upon Guardian of the Phoenix Press. Your 
Alright, there is a dragon there. We can get flaming attacks for all, for all our troops. I will not fail. It won't necessarily help our army over here. Ah, Drasif. Let's see what he does. He might besiege it, yes. And believe it or not, that's actually the best thing that could have happened to me. Because him besieging it will not end so well for him. Between the garrison, it is a tier 2 garrison, and the army that I have there, I might be able to score a win. Obviously, this isn't an ideal scenario, but then again, this, these things do happen. If you're hoping that you're going to get miraculous victories every single time, and every time things are going to go your way, no, welcome to Total War. These kind of things do happen. But as I see it, this is a mistake. Because there is quite an army here. Of the Phoenix and I could just decide to wait it out, kinda. Follow the dragon. And send Emmerich to go for... Enough. Uh, send Emmerich to go uh, over there. Done. What do you bring? I could also invoke I could also invoke Val That would be 1500 and I have enough money to last me Just another turn Let's go with the Reaver Bow. Of See, if Drazov attacks, now Dei has this tendency. When they end up in a situation like this, they have a tendency of committing to the siege, which actually is to my advantage. The reason it's for to my advantage is because I don't really care about this army necessarily but if Drazov does try and take it like and I also have the Thunder Gods potentially coming in to help me out there now I know I'm gonna lose the Sentinels here I like I could have risked a battle an open field battle but defeating Drazov's army is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world all right so he's going over there, we we're gonna take Mount Grey Hag. Sometimes you just gotta play, you just gotta roll, uh, roll those. Uh... Okay. And this is gonna give me the Confederation of Kalidor. Let's see what we got here. Now, sometimes, dependent on the situation that you might face, it might be worth... Oof, that is a rough one. The decadent paradise. Oh. Let's hear it. If what you seek is for the greater good, as you say. Now, you sometimes you might get a situation so favorable. Queen of Ava, what matters do you wish to lay before the Ever Queen? The time is now. I'm listening. Okay. The war speak quickly. Well, I'm Give the word. Be sure you do not waste my time. In my all right, so we got name. all those what would you have pacts. Of me? You have a proposal for the Asur. How delightful! All right. Let's hear it. Defend Prince Eltharion. Ready the Reaver. The cursed deeps shall be your watery grave. Loyal servant. Instead, I'm going to go to Tyrion. Alariel's champion. Now this army here. Well, that was bad development. Sometimes you might get so lucky. If what you seek is for the greater good, my sword is yours. Sometimes you might just get so lucky uh, that you can obviously understood. Uh, you can secure. Uh, you can secure Kalidor for for yourself. Uh, you can get so lucky with Noctilus and the RNG there that you might let's get vigor loss reduction, charge bonus, fall armaments, dragon heart. Uh, 
Ashen Fields. You might get lucky Lost. enough sometimes that you actually get a decent right. enough army at Kalidor that can take some settlements from Noctilus. It depends on what Noctilus is doing and how the timing works out for you. Other times you won't get so lucky. That was a bit of an unfortunate one. Now it is risky to let Drazov just besiege my settlement. My prowess is needed. But maybe the Thunder Gods will do things. Uh, will do some, me a favor there. If I can take Tretch's capital, All right. that would obviously work out better for me. Alright, so he's dealt with the rebellion over there. We got the Cafe and Caravan. Now, I'm not in such a position I can take advantage of the caravan. You gotta remember, territory is not really the important bit over here. Securing a win. Now, could I... Yes, I could. So, what I'm going to do over here is... Load the... Potentially another character. Let's get this one observant. To war! There we go. I'm just gonna keep this army for a turn and maybe even start recruiting some new units over here to keep Tretch at bay. Gonna get rid of this structure, should probably. The dragon shall wake. Done so. That's one of Tretch's armies there. Completely dealt with. I'll be quite honest, you know what I'm hoping will happen here? I'm kind of hoping. Uh, I'll just recruit a lord, I could have done this uh, a bit earlier. Let's get with an Archmage of High Magic. I would have hoped... And she's gonna help deal with that situation. Like, I would have hoped... Um, that Draza would have attacked by now, so I could have out resolved. But he's not completely stupid. Now, even if I have to take all of this back from Tretch, that's fine, as I see it. I can do so. That isn't the problem. <laughs> At all, really. And now, because I got lucky with the caravan. Just gonna get a regiment right now. And now he attacks. This is what I've been waiting for, because I know I can annihilate his army in a siege. Like, look at the units I have here. He, there is no way this army is gonna win this particular battle. And I know it. We're gonna do this. Attacking Drazov's for, a portion of the army head-on is probably a, a foolish decision. Hell, even attacking this guy, he built a lot of siege towers. He's certainly gone to town with building those siege towers. So instead, I'm going to take all of my... I'm going to leave some units over here to just, you know, hold the walls as best as they can. But my intent, if you will, is not necessarily to contest the walls as much as it is. Okay, so these guys, I'm just going to put three units here. But my intent is not necessarily to contest the walls uh, as much as it is to do some damage with the towers. I want to buy myself some time over here. Okay. Now I need to hold this victory point and this victory point. This one is not going to be an issue because I'm going to deploy my entire army over here. And just completely obliterate him over there. Or I can deploy some spearmen on the walls, eventually abandon the walls. Like, let's do it like this. Archers. 
and then turn these guys around and deal with Razif's little force over there. See, one of the reasons the elves in particular are such an absolute nightmare to tackle in a siege is because they're really, really hard to dislodge from a diff from a from an entrenched position. Now Drazov is going to come from this point and that point. There is no way his army over here can advance uh, against me. That's something I know. I'm also going to throw the ogres, uh, these guys over here as well. I know that. He may know that as well. So over here, we're just going to contest the walls to a certain extent. And once they come down from the walls, we're just going to kill them. So yeah, Drazev cannot win this battle. I would be... Let me just put it like that, uh, like this. Like, those are laborers, right? And I can deal with uh, some of his towers. Let's see which unit he has that's actually good. Come on, come on, come on. That's one unit. You gotta love the invocation of all. And you can see he's just literally lost two of his siege towers there. The third, the fourth. You got the idea. I'm kind of wasting my time here, actually. I know how this battle is going to go down, but honestly, I admit I'm a bit surprised as to how well it has gone, gone down. That right there, what's going on right there, is already a major win as I see it. Alright, let's be careful with our, uh, uh, the archers there. And I'm gonna build a really good tower there. Okay, Drazov may have broken the gate. But as stated, he can only come here. I'll be honest, at this point, this battle is over. So, <laughs> it's over before he even reached the walls. Like, look, like his blunderbusses are taking damage. They've already taken quite a bit of damage there. Drazov may succeed in doing some damage over there, but it's going to be super superficial at best. And, you know that little hero he has here? I'm just going to let him do a bit of damage, and then I'm just going to slaughter him with, um, with this ability. I will literally kill my own units here just to fuck with him. No joke. Like, look at this. Oh, it didn't work. Okay. Orders received. All right, let's get sorted over there and build a good tower. As you say, quickly now. It shall be done. Seal. All right, these guys are coming in.
They were doing quite well on the walls there. I would have expected the ability. Oh, it's one of those indestructible parts of the wall. Okay, I get it. Send them against the cast uh, dual warriors. It will be done. Acknowledge. Archers. It shall be done. I dress it. Oh, that's gonna be nasty. Hold on. Asurian guides us. There is one unit that I do fear in Drazif's army, and that is the Kadai Fireborn. Because if there is a unit in his entire army that might actually cause me a lot of damage, it's these guys. I kind of regret deploying so many range units on the other side. Here's the thing though about Kadai. Once they're deployed... Can we get some more? Yep, we can get another tower here. As you say, we advance. Asur, advance. We away. All right. Once um. Archers. Understood. Like once they they run out of um. Uh, HP, they're just kind of gonna start going down very very quickly. And that's the moment you you really take advantage of that. I'm going to send a unit uh, over there. Drazov is coming. I'm gonna send my noble. And we're also gonna try and take down his hero over here. Now, as for the blunderbusses, well, that's what we have ogres for. Look at them go. I kind of don't want to take a lot of damage here. Now, where is the Infernal Guard, though, I wonder? Alright, just gonna pull back here. There's no reason to engage in a range duel here with between these guys. Anyway, this battle is finished, so... Let's just move on. So I won the bell and then the game bugged out. Pray silly. Pretty annoying when that happens, by the way. You fight a difficult battle and make no mistake, that was a difficult battle. Like if it was Emmerich's army against Razov, yeah, that would have been a cakewalk. But it wasn't Emmerich's army. Emmerich's army was going to deal with Tretch. But basically, Drazov is finished. 
And Tretch is still out there. He's going to take the Black Fortress. I sacrificed the Lord that I recruited to deal with the Caravan. Just because I'm a lazy bastard and I didn't want to out resolve that a particular battle. Could have won it, could have kept the Garrison alive, and could have disbanded the Lord. Like, if you want to play completely optimally, you should fight the Caravan battles if you're going to lose your entire Garrison to defeat the Caravan. I didn't want to. And as a result of that, I couldn't disband the Lord, which means he's besieged. He's going to get besieged by Tretch uh, in the Black Fortress. I just didn't want... I could have disbanded them all the same, but I just didn't want to allow Tretch to just walk in the Black Fortress. I do have uh, I do have an issue with just giving Tretch a settlement. But basically what I would have to do in this situation is I would have to take Mount Silver Spear. I've eliminated Tretch's recruitment. Drazif is finished. He's not going to recover. My army's there in the Fortress of Oregon if Oregon are going to finish him. Things I could have done different. Uh, I could have not allied the Thunder Guts because allying them simply meant that Drazov declared war on them. And because he declared war on them, instead of me declaring war on him, it meant he was going to use Dundra. If I had been the one to declare war on Drazov, or if Drazov had not been in the position he was in in the Darkhold, when he declared war, he would not have used Dundra, and my territory would have been secure. But guess what? Things happen. Mistakes happen. Campaigns are not perfect. And no one really plays a game perfectly. And that's fine. That's, you know, that's expected. When it comes to a guide, I feel, you just got to give people ideas. So, the idea is, take out the dwarves, deal with the thunder gods, either wipe them out completely or make a deal with them. Not necessarily a military alliance or defensive alliance as, as I did, but not an aggression pact trade agreement, military access. Yeah, you could do that. And that way, you don't have to engage with Gorse diplomatically, which means Greece doesn't get pissed off at you, which is to your advantage, because it means the Sentinels, when you take them, won't be pressured by Greece. I mean... It's one thing to fight Tretch after we deal with Drazov. It's another thing to fight Greases and uh, Tretch at the same time. But now at this point, like I would just march Emmerich's army, take Mount Silver Spear, then march it east, deal with Tretch, finish him off, because Emmerich's army is not going to be defeated by Tretch with clan rats and uh, Skaven slaves. Well, my secondary army still keeps building strength. I've already, and I ended up getting a lot of diplomatic agreements with the High Elven factions. And at that, after this point in the campaign, where I left it off, basically, after this particular point, the campaign is effectively won, really. Because the only thing that's going to pose a threat after this point, like, Queek may come in, but I can, you know, just march everything that I have against Queek, and I'll win that battle, because my army is stronger than him. Uh, Grimgor could come from the north, but because I'm killing so many Chaos Dwarves, he might actually like me, and I could take the Wolflands and sell it to Grimgor and just get him off my back in that situation. There are options. Like, if you're playing a Cast Dwarf, or if you're uh, if you're playing a Cast Dwarf like Drazov or Astrograph, you have to deal with Grimgor. But if you're playing as Imric, while he hates you all the same, he also hates the Cast Dwarf. So you can actually get some kind of deal with uh, with Grimgor. The problem is you're gonna still going to have territory that's exposed to Grimgor, so you're going to have to deal with that at some point. I probably would deal with Quake first and then turn around and march against Grimgor, though that is also a huge time sink. It depends, I guess, on how you're marching against Quake. Uh, Quake. But that's um, that's how to get a good start in Emmerich's campaign, just what you need to know. E ideally, this is an important thing. These are the important things. You want to deal with the dwarves quickly. You want to get a rebellion. You want to deal with the Thunder Guts, one way or another, either taking their armies out and getting a peace treaty and selling their territory back to them, or taking them out completely and selling their territory to Gorse. Or just going for, for Gorse, though that's not recommended. But yeah, deal with the dwarves, get the rebellion, deal with the rebellion, get the influence from the rebellion, deal with the Thunder Guts, get more influence, take their territory, get money. And then you should... The first battle you fight against Drazov should be the Black Fortress one, because that way you're eliminating his Mega Mortar. Drazov's army is not the problem. Drazov's nuke is the problem. Um, and once you deal with that, Tretch and what remains of Drazov not going to be an issue. And after that point, you got a plenty of flexibility to deal with everything. Remember, the High Elves get stronger the more you play their campaigns. The, the, the more you play their campaign. And Imric, especially, once he gets on a dragon, it's GG. Kwasin here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. If you would like to see more videos of this kind of style, well, let me know which campaign you'd like me to cover. I could cover, uh, you know, I could cover one of the dwarves. I could obviously co cover 
Quick. I've already done uh, Tretch. I could do Grimgore if you want how to win that. Now, one of the things to mention is some people would say, oh, you can take an Agashia Settlement very quickly. I don't want to do that because you cheese it. That's exploiting the game, exploiting the AI, the defensive AI. And I think that's complete and utter BS. Like either exploiting stock or exploiting the way the reinforcements are positioned. I'm not sure if the, in that settlement the reinforcements show up in like next to the victor point. I know for a cast dwarf capital they do, but not in that settlement necessarily. So I'm not fond of that. And you'll never see me advocate for that because I think if you're advocating for that and teaching people to play like that, one, you're teaching people the bad lessons, and two, it just means that uh, people are going to start using it more and more, so there's less incentive for Creative Assembly to fix the major bloody issues in the game. Or maybe because people are exploiting it, they might have more incentive. I don't know. But stay tuned for more.